Hey everybody, this video is the first in a series on addressing and demonstrating how to use data that's in a spreadsheet or CSV file and use that to update motion design graphics in Unreal Engine. I've gotten a few questions on this over the past few weeks, so I figured I'd make this series to address it. Now this first video is really just a functional overview showing how it works in general and how that's useful. And then there'll be a couple other videos after this on this specific example where uh, the first one will be a rapid fire technical overview that will be particularly useful for anyone who's already familiar with blueprints and data tables and csv files in general also it'll be useful if you've uh, gone through the final video in this initial series to, if you want to just like brush up on some aspect that final video the second video after this that'll be a really careful step-by-step -step explanation of how to go from i don't have this setup at all to uh, it's fully working and explaining each step of the way so if you're new to blueprints and data tables in unreal engine that one will be really useful for you in terms of implementing this for yourself for the very first time so let's get started with this functional overview basically what we're doing here is using data tables that are external to unreal engine and using them to update the graphics that we have on display in a rundown so in this example i've got two spreadsheets a list a csv and a list b csv and these are just files that are out on my drive technically a csv is a you know common separated values text file i have them open in excel here and what we see is that list a has a lower third text column that has uh, values of list a text one list a text two text three and so on uh, the first column is the name of each row so lt1 lt2 for lower thirds one two three four five six and list b is a different file and that has the same first column so the same names in each row but the LT, the lower thirds text value is different uh, than list A. So we have list B, title one, title two, title three versus text one, text two, text three. And so we want to be able to uh, load up one or the other of these or you know maybe others later on in the future to populate the uh, titles that we might be using the lower thirds in a particular rundown. So we can have a template set up that uh, you know fires off all the various lower thirds, but we can have someone outside of Unreal Engine just update a spreadsheet and then uh, bring that in. So what does that look like? Well, I've got a rundown set up here where we've got four pages. They're all using the same uh, lower thirds template. The lower thirds template is just, you know, a bar at the bottom and it's got some animation. And uh, right now it's just saying CSV file demo. But in my rundown, each page has a row name here that designates what row it should be getting from a data table asset elsewhere in our content browser. So if I play this particular page right now, it's reading in LT1. And uh, this data table, if I double click it right now, it's got the data from list A loaded up. So if I close up that uh, table and I preview in my first page, we get list A text one. And if we preview next, we get list A text two and so on all the way through. Now, if I want to start this over, let's preview out, but instead I want to use list B, well, then I can go to my data table, uh, re-import with a new file, and I'll choose list B. And so now that data table, if I double click, has the data from list B in it. And so when I play the same exact set of pages without changing any of the values, well, now we're getting the list B data. So list B, title one, preview next is title two, and so on and so forth. So that is how this helps us because we can have this template set up for our typical rundown of a show but we can bring in new data for each individual show that uh, we want to put our graphics together on and this is working with any set of data and by the way i haven't gone to the last page we have list b but i could go ahead and re-import our uh, list a again so we do that and immediately i can preview next and this is going to bring in a uh, lower thirds row four and already it's of course uh, bringing in the data that's in list A. So whatever data is in here is what gets applied. And finally, just as a kind of a functional overview here, the way this is working is that there is a custom blueprint actor here in the template level that has an event uh, that's set up to basically read the value from the table then apply that to the uh, the text actor itself and then the event that's running that logic is being triggered in the sequencer right here so this actor has its own track in the sequencer here is our in sequence and right here is a trigger 
that fires off that procedure, or essentially the event, that updates the text. And so it's updating this text before it gets drawn. So I just fired it for, um, well, LT1. So if I were to uh, continue this animation right now, let's, uh, let's try and see if I fire it and play it. There we go. So now we've loaded in the text based on the uh, row name here in this particular actor. And this is also built into the uh, change sequence where we have a fade out portion of this first. And then as we cross by the uh, marker A, there's another trigger here to read in the next value. So if I select this actor and change this, say, to uh, LT4, then I play my change. This will fade out. And then right here, we trigger running the update of text. And so then we should see list A text 4. Play that. And there we go. So that's how that all works. And of course, then this row name is exposed to remote control. And we have that over here. And that remote control value is what's getting updated here page by page in Rundown. So that's the overview of how it works. And in the next video, we'll do a rapid fire exploration of the details of the blueprint behind this and how that all fits together. And then finally, there'll be a third video that goes step by step, carefully explaining each element of this workflow so that uh, you could build it yourself. So I hope this helps. Until next time, have fun.